religion in our hearts. And that's the, the, the teachings of Rasulullah He kept everyone, even during the time of the, the calamity, during the time of the hardship, having something of the spiritual connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is our mission. So alhamdulillah, we, we have spoken today about the, 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 the legacy of Rasulullah and how Rasulullah was in mercy to whom? What's the translation? We said no. Don't, we said don't, don't say mankind. But Allah said Lil alami, to the entire creation. Okay. So even he وسلم, was in mercy to the animals. He was in mercy, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to everyone. Even he was in mercy to the jinn kind, not only to the human kind. And we have Surah Al Jinn. I need you, inshallah, after the, the lecture, so you have a good background about the jinn. What happened with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and his message to the jinn kind too. But uh, overall, we got this message that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, he was in mercy. And we got many, many stories about the mercy of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But in fact, his life Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a model for us. And not only for his conduct, for his behavior, but even how he used to dress Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how he used to talk, how he used to eat, how he used to drink. So Allah, when Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا When Allah said that you will get the good example, the best example ever from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that means he was khuluqi and khilqi. That means his way of walking, his way of laughing, his way of talking, his way of dealing with people and also the, 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 the morals, his relationship with Allah, his conduct, his behavior, that's Rasulullah Sallallahu If you are, if you wanted to measure something, you have to measure it through Rasulullah Sallallahu that, Alaihi that's, that's our model. So we have two ways, as I told you, like the train. So you have the, the, the two things that train using to, to walk in. So we have, the Muslim lives like this. He has the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You cannot walk just on one side and lean to, lean, it, lean to it and leave the other side. No, we need to have the two sides. And one of the things also that we need to know about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how he used to read to treat with, with his enemies. This is the example that we give today. And another example that we can get from Safana bint Hatim al Ta'i. Who is Safana? And some of the some people say Safana. So whether it was Safana or Safana, eh, she is one of the, the best women in the Arabian Peninsula. At that time, she was so knowledgeable, she was so eloquent. She used to say the poetry, and uh, mashallah, she has the, the good way and the good character to express herself. Uh, and one of the battles, Rasulullah he sent some of his companions to a certain battle and they captived, you know, many of people and from this tribe, Qabila uh, Taik, the tribe of Taik. So there were amongst them Safana. And while Rasulullah is passing by, and that was something very normal at that time. Even nowadays, every, every war has its captives. So it's not something strange. We still apply this after 14 centuries. So it's not something new. So Rasulullah was passing by and Safana called him. And she, she said, oh Muhammad, I am the, the, the daughter of a person who used to be most honest and trustworthy. I am the daughter of the man who used to honor people, who used to be generous, who used to take care of the orphans and, and the poor and needy. 
And my dad it was a leader in his tribe. So could you please free me? So he said, who is your dad actually? She said, I am the daughter of Hatim Ta'i. And for your information, Hatim Ta'i used to be known as one of the people who have generosity, who had hospitality. Even lots of people wrote about him, about his hospitality. So she, she shared her background with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so what, what's the reaction? What do you think about Rasulullah? What he should do? Should free her, okay? That's kind of to be a, a, a noble and to be that honorable person to free her. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not only free her, but he freed her Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he gave her all what she needs. And he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told, she said, Ya Rasulullah, O oh Muhammad, without Rasulullah, O oh Muhammad, could you do a favor for me also? He said, what kind of favor? Yes, ask me. She said, what about my people? What about the rest of my people? He said, all of them are free because of you, because of your character, because of your behavior. So he freed, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all her people, I mean the captives. So she went to her tribe and she told her dad, she told her son, I came after I met the best man ever in my life. So she marketed, she told them about Islam and she told them about the good character of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you know what? They declared Islam. All, all the tribe came to meet the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all of them declared Islam. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. That is because of his honesty, because of his mercy, because of his behavior sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And to be honest, nowadays we have lost, lots of people lost the direction, the true direction of their religion. They thought that their religion or to be religious or to be connected with Allah, to pray five times a day or even to pray only in Jumu'ah and sit with people and subhanallah they they are far away from the true religion they are far away from the be, the behavior of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you have lots of people they 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 did not feel shame during the week to play to disobey allah to waste their time not to pray and maybe engaging in a, in a bad relationship with a woman, maybe drinking alcohol, maybe stealing, cheating, backbiting, all the bad words, and subhanAllah, all of the sudden, when it comes to Jumu'ah, he takes his shower, he comes to the masjid, Allahu Akbar, I worshiped Allah. Is, 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 that, is that the behavior of the true Muslim? No. No, that's, that's not the, the, the true believer. We classify people into two categories, the hypocrites. Do you remember? Or you, or you forgot? We said that hypocrites are two types. Those people who believed, but when they acted, they acted the actions of the hypocrites. And the other type, those people who never believed, but they are pretending, pretending, just acting like believers. Who is the worst? The one who did not believe. That's the case. How many Muslims believed in Allah, believed in the messenger of Allah, believed in the Quran, 
But when they acted, they acted like hypocrites. How many have lots of people like this? And they were brainwashed by the media, by the news, by the social media. To be a good Muslim, you have to be modern. What's the meaning of, or what's the definition of modern in their point of view is not to be so tough in your worship or to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and just give your religion half hour per week. Like Christians, when they go to the churches every Sunday. So we Muslims, we go to Masajid Friday and that's it. That's our relationship with Islam. I'm, I'm talking here about the majority of Muslims. Yes, Alhamdulillah. We still have the worshipers of Allah. We still have those people who pray five times a day. We still have lots of people, alhamdulillah, having good connection with Allah. But I'm talking about the majority of people. They are busy with their jobs, with collecting money, with spending on their family members. And what's their relationship with Allah, with their religion? is to come Jumu'ah, Friday and, and Ramadan, and not even all Ramadan. You know that scenario? We have this scenario, mashallah, every year. At the beginning of Ramadan, great zeal and mashallah, the masjid is packed. No space. After six, seven days, they come to the Imam. Imam, could you please shorten the salah? Okay, have Okay, uh, I obey, how? But the Imam knows, Imam knows what's going on. But okay, is that your problem To You need me to shorten, okay? I will do that. Then you shorten the salah. And after 10 days, mashallah, the masjid numbers decreases. Every day decreases. Then after the 10 days, the normal people, we get back to the normal. 12, 15, 20, normal people. They disappear and they pop up from the ground, you know, at the night of Laylatul Qadr. Allah, the masjid packed. Allahu Akbar. After Laylatul Qadr, they disappear. They pop up again at the day of Eid, Salah Eid. Salatul Eid, which is Sunnah. And they leave Fajr, which is Fajr, which is Fard. Then they leave Dhuhr, which is Fard too. So they miss two Fards to come to accomplish Sunnah. And after Salatul Eid, they disappear. Salaamu Alaikum Imam. See you next Eid, inshallah, which is Eid Al-Adha. We became like seasonal worship. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of seasons. That's not the way of the Muslim. That's not, that's not how, you, how you have a good connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at Rasulullah. Look at his way, how he presented Islam. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, even with our, neighbor, with, with our neighbors, we have lots of people are hiding. They are hiding that they are Muslims, you know? They are hiding. They do not want anyone. Otherwise, they will tell you, you know what? We have people, we have racists. We have people are, you know, uh, ignorance. And we have people do not appreciate our religion. So we will, we will be in trouble. And they change their names. They change their names amongst each others just to hide. Especially if so, if your name is Ahmed, like me, so what's the best name that you give me instead of Ahmed? American name. Mo Salah. Mo Salah. Huh? Helper? Albert. Albert. <laughs> yes, Albert, Ahmed, yes. <laughs> Subhanallah. May Allah forgive us. May Allah forgive us. Wallah. 
Yeah, yes. Jashimuddin, yes, Josh. Yeah, that's the case. Wallahi, wallahi, if I paid all my life to show my identity as a Muslim and to hide it, it would not be sufficient for my deen. When I, when I'm not comparing, by the way, I'm just telling you the difference between them and us, what they made and what we did. They, they sacrificed everything. But subhanAllah, we don't even want to sacrifice some of our money, some of our rest, part of our rest, part of our, you know, education, some part of our uh, 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 land. No, we need everything. That's why, what's your main priority? Is it Islam? We, let's count, let's be honest. It's easy to, to cheat one another. It's easy to say the good words. You know what? You are the best of the Umm. That's a lie, by the way. But let's, let's put the, the parity first nowadays. Most of people, number one, what's number one? Job. Huh? Job. job. Because job will bring money. So number one is money. Number two, huh? money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> number three, money. Number four, his children. Number five, his wife. Maybe, maybe, I'm not sure of it. Okay, his wife. And the, the rest is my entertainment, my gym, you know, that's, that's the case. My car, I, I, I know people, you know, they love their cars more than even their wives. Wallahi. You know? So, and what about my deen? If I have time, I will give it to my deen. But if I don't have, I have my excuse. Allah knows. Allah ghafoor right? Allah is the most gracious and the most merciful. That wasn't Rasulullah and not his sahaba too. So we are talking about a very wide gap between them and us. That's why when you analyze why we had that situation as Muslim Ummah, that weakness, that weakness, because we left our religion. And I have the proof, I have the evidence. What's the evidence? When Rasulullah said in the hadith, I have left for you two things. If you left them, if you abandon them, you will be astray. The Quran and the Sunnah. And as long as you stick with the Quran and the Sunnah, you will be the best. And let me, let me ask a very critical question. But I will not give the answer. But just I will give you the question and you have to answer according to your mind. We have, we had before, during the time of Rasulullah وسلم, we had Abu Jahl. Do you know Abu Jahl? Who, who is Abu Jahl? Yeah, I mean, not Abu Dhar. Abu Jahl. Yes, who is Abu Jahl? One of the enemies of Rasulullah, the most. Okay, who is Abu Lahab? Okay, MashaAllah. And he was one of the enemies of Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay? And the 40 men surrounded the house of Rasulullah sallallahu to kill him. Do you know them? Yes. So, so Rasulullah had enemies on his time. Enemies for Islam. Do you think nowadays we have Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab? Yes. Do you think? Or, or alhamdulillah we do not have enemies for Islam? So many. So what they are doing and what's their plan? What is their mission? And what we did to defend our Islam? These are my questions. Now you, you took care of the answer. But now we as Muslims, when we hear that somebody is, you know, uh, did something and he uh, made a fun of Rasulullah through some of the drawings, some of the pictures like we feel 
hey, we feel like we are, there is a fire burning our chests, our hearts. And as I told you today in Juma, that cannot hurt Rasulullah. Okay, we, we have to agree on that. It hurts our hearts, yes. But be sure that al Islam deen, إذا حاربوه اشتد وإذا تركوه امتد Our religion is the solid religion that they if if they fought Islam it will expand more and if they left Islam peacefully it will be more stronger there is no way with Islam no way because it's the religion of Allah. Allah said, That will last till the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will let that deen overtake any other faith, any other religion. That's, that's what Allah promised us. And that's part of the Quran. The problem is not in Rasulullah. The problem is not in that religion. The problem in me and you. If we met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he's going to ask you that question, and I need you to prepare the answer. What did you make to defend your religion? That's the question. What did you make to defend your religion? What was your mission? What was your rule? And you have to prepare an answer for that. You have to say to Allah, Allah, I did so and so. Otherwise, you have to catch up. You have to find out. You have to try your best to support, to do something, to teach somebody. And, and I can see lots of people, mashallah, they have the good intention. Yes, good intention, Allah Akbar. He loves Allah and his messenger, but he does not want to do the action. Our Islam, Allah did not say, except those people who believed and they entered Jannah, no. He said, they believed and they did. So do not walk the walk, but talk the talk. That means our religion is the religion of actions to do something. Let me give you two examples before I finish. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he migrated from Mecca to Medina, when he migrated, he suffered in his journey to Medina. He tried to hide. He took another way. He found someone to take him and teach him the way, to lead him on that way. So he suffered a lot, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But what's the, what's the lesson? Allah could have taken him through the wings of Jibreel. That happened in Al-Isra wa Al-Mi'raj, in Al-Buraq. Allah could bring one of these Buraq to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to take him from Mecca to Medina. End of the story, alhamdulillah. Allah's messenger is, has been, have been protected and he is safe now. That, that did not happen. Another example. We know, alhamdulillah, exactly that uh, Sayyidina Musa السلام, was saved from Fir'aun. So how Allah saved Musa السلام, Allah asked him to do the action, to hit the water, the sea with his staff. Allah could split the water without his staff. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted him to do the action, to do something. Even in the Torah, in the Bible, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ibn Adam, harrik yadak, ubsit laka fi rizqin. Move your hand, move your hand, and I will give you sustenance. That means we need to do the action. Sometimes in the worldly matters, we do the actions very well. You go to your job, you take the course, you prepare yourself, you write down your resume, 
you apply you, every day early in the morning, you set the alarm, you go to, to, to your job, you come back. MashaAllah, we do the action because it will bring money, you know? But for our religion, for the hereafter, which will remain, that's the case. We, we depend on our intention. You know what, Imam? I have the good intention. Yes, you have the, I have no doubt in this. But actions speak loud more than, more than words. So do you have car? Where is your registration? Can you drive? Where is your license? Do you own, do you own house? Where is your deed? If you did not show proof, that means you have nothing. So actions, we, if we wanted to change, we need to have action to be like the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us, Allahumma ameen. Please, I need you to spread this message. Our Islam is all about love, mercy, and kindness. Spread this message. That's the least that you can make for our religion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. Allahumma ameen. Zakumullah khaira. And Zakumullah khaira for giving me the time to share some of the words with you. Allahumma ameen. And I welcome my brothers and sisters who joined us. Sister Bibi Jameer, uh, Dr. Siddiqui, Brother Muhammad Nasruddin and his wife. Sister Bibi Krishnan, Brother Muhammad Firdus Lani. May Allah bless him. Allahumma ameen. Yes, alhamdulillah, he did not give me hard time today. Even if he gave me, I, I like that one. Uh, Sister Khadija, Auntie Maria, mashallah. Uh, may Allah bless her, Allah ameen. Uh, Brother Mizan, Shaliza, Saf, Sabar, Rolas, Fifi, and also Brother Hasib Sharif from New York. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of them, Allah ameen. And I welcome, of course, my brothers and sisters here. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Zakum Allah khaira. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.